Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Jones. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about starting one of my very favorite projects, which is a large scale acrylic portrait on cardboard. And a um, couple of things that I want to just say right off the bat is that this does not have to be a self portrait. Okay, it can be anybody, but I do not want you to use copyrighted pictures. So um, if you can provide your own reference picture, that would be better. I will say also, um, you know, babies and old people tend to be a little bit more challenging um, with proportions and texture of skin, etc. So um, you might want to keep that in mind as you are considering this. And one of the cool things that I think um, that I really appreciate about this project is the fact that you guys get to work large scale. Um, typically, you know, if you were to buy a canvas um, the size of the, the cardboard we were working on, um, it's, it's fairly expensive. So it's really nice to be able to have the experience um, of painting larger than life size. Um, you can see here with your learning targets that one of the um, targets that we are thinking about is really using the imperfections and texture of an altered surface. So when you're looking at all the different salvaged pieces of cardboard that I have, um, you might see pieces that have the corrugation of the cardboard showing, or maybe there is um, two pieces layered together where the box was constructed. Maybe there is an interesting fold um, but I would just encourage you to look at those pieces um, and look for opportunities um, to take advantage of some of those little imperfections. Um, we are also going to be really thinking about um, influencing our style by looking at the expressive color and application of other artists and um, hopefully using color and texture expressively. Now I know I have maybe a couple of people in this class that are um, taking painting for the second time. So if you've already done this project um, and you want a different challenge, then I would say um, here are your options. You can kind of look through those. If you wanted to do more abstract um, color or realistic color, or if you wanted to do it on a canvas, um, that would be fine too. Um, but as far as planning goes, I really would like you to spend some time looking at different portrait artists and looking at their use of color and application. Um, I want you to spend some time reflecting in your sketchbook. This will be an artifact for your last sketchbook submission um, about wh why do people even make portraits? You know, how do people um, convey the personality and the spirit of somebody in the portrait? Um, Again, I would like you to find your own reference photo um, yourself, family, friend. Um, it's going to be much easier for you if you use something that has high contrast lighting um, and then do some sort of editing with different um, colored filters. And I'm going to flip here. This is a whole different list of different artists um, who use color an application expressively. Um, one of the artists specifically that you're gonna look at a little bit later is Francois Neely. Um, very, very cool painter. Um, that'll be something that I assign later this week as well, well as Joshua Meals. Um, <clears throat> but notice what he's holding. He's holding a palette knife and that is gonna be one of the main tools that you guys use. Um, here are some different websites or some apps for your phone that you can um, look through and play around with different um, photo filters. <clears throat> but you will notice that the room is set up with easels set up all around the room. And I'm hoping that you will take the advantage of the, the setup that I have for you and try working vertically. Now you don't have to, it's not required but um, there is plenty of space for everybody to at least try it out. Um, if you'd rather work at your tabletop, that's fine. Um, but I find that working vertically is really, really um, nice. And I like being able to step back um, and look at it from a distance very easily. So um, 
That is why the room is set up the way that it is. <clears throat> Here are a few student examples you can look through. Um, and again, everybody has really appreciated this project in the past. It's one that I've done year after year just because um, so many people find such um, great success. But we are going for unrealistic color. Okay, we do not want to use realistic color. Um, we are going to be kind of mapping things out first very lightly in either pencil or chalk pastel and kind of slowly building up those layers. Um, I would encourage you guys to really think about um, filling the space um, in a unique and interesting way. Um, the more zoomed in and cropped closely it'll be, the, the easier I think it'll be to paint. Here are a few others. You can kind of see on some of these, like this one, um, the student actually ripped away the um, cardboard coating. And so you can kind of see the corrugation kind of showing through um, or this student really had some fun um, playing with distortion and reflection so I am super excited to see what you guys um, come up with and looking forward um, to seeing what pictures you pick <laughs>